Hey friends, welcome back. So we've heard over and over that face masks save lives. That's why you see so many people still wearing face masks in their car, at the grocery store. Heck, I have some of my neighbors that are wearing face masks while they're walking their dog because they're of course following the science. There couldn't possibly be any downsides about wearing face masks, could there? Well, we're gonna talk about the Feugen effect. This is a German scientist that published a paper comparing death rates in a county in Kansas that mandated masks compared to a county that did not mandate masks and looking at the relative risk of mask mandates compared to non-mask mandates. And he adjusted for all sorts of other confounding variables and guess what he found? the county that mandated mask mandates actually had higher COVID-19 death rates during the months, I think it was, um, it was August 1st, 2020 to October of 2020. Now this is very important because you're not gonna hear about this on MSNBC, CNN, or NBC, or ABC, or these other networks because we've been promised by the experts that face masks save lives. There's no downside, there's nothing. You gotta mask your kids. If you could put a mask on your dog, in fact, in Seattle, I've seen a woman mask her dog, mask her dog, okay? So what is this Feugen effect? I'm not gonna break down every little scientific, you know, statistic and all this. The papers right here was a, an analysis of data, but then he talks about this effect known as the Feugen effect that up to now has not been talked about. And here goes the hypothesis, the thinking, that when you wear a facial covering, and you're exposed to say SARS-CoV-2, it's the early stages of the increasing viral load, that the face mask actually can increase viral load by preventing the virons that would normally be exhaled from coming back in. Now you might question, you go, gosh, I know my uncle Sam or uncle Sally who wore the mask all the time and they've gotten COVID three or four times by now. How could that possibly be? Whereas you might've only gotten COVID once. Well, could it be by that the face mask is actually increasing the viral load in the wearer and not actually protecting the wearer in the way that they think it is, okay? So let's just first talk about big picture. In November of 2020, there was the Danish mask study that actually found no statistically significant increases in the protective effect of masking in those that are masked versus unmasked. Now, some people said, well, that was an unethical study. It's unethical to evaluate masking during the, the midst of a pandemic. So they just brushed it off. In fact, Carl Hennigan, I think was his name, one of the I believe he's at Oxford. It was part of the evidence-based medicine outfit over at Oxford. He got censored on Twitter for sharing his own peer-reviewed study known as the Danish mask study. That was the only sort of randomized mask study up to now that has actually looked at the, the outcomes of wearing masks uh, compared to non-wearing masks. A lot of people say, well, it's unethical. We can't, it was just one study, but then they continue to wear the masks inside now, even though advocates of masking have still gotten COVID. Bill Gates recently got COVID. We know that Dr. Anthony Fauci himself has tested positive somehow from the virus. Okay, we've talked about that before, but what is this Feugen effect? I really want to talk about this. And I feel like hopefully by now we're at a place in society where we can talk about this without me being censored again. If we're gonna follow the science, shouldn't we be following research that's peer reviewed in reputable journals here? So here is the hypothesis that is being uh, discussed as the Feugen effect. Hopefully I'm pronouncing this right. Okay. A rationale for the increased risk ratio by mandating masks is probably that virons enter or those coughed out in droplets are retained in the face mask uh, tissue after quick evaporation and droplets. This is hyper condensing the droplets or pure virons uh, and then is causing this to be re-inhaled uh, after inhalation. So again, you, you're infectious with a virus. You have a mask. It's just like if, you know, first responders and paramedics, when individuals are in a state of oxygen dead or they're, they're hyperventilating, they'll give them a, a bag oftentimes to help people from fainting and stuff after a traumatic experience. Well, what are you doing there? You're, you're concentrating uh, oxygen and things like that. So what he says here is in the Feugen effect, the virons spread because of their smaller size deeper into the respiratory tract. Uh, they bypass the bronchi and are inhaled deep into the alveoli where they can cause pneumonia instead of bronchitis. This is, this is so insane, uh, which would be typical of a virus infection. Furthermore, he says, these virons bypass the multi-layer squamous epithelial cells. That way they cannot pass and therefore the probable way for the virons to enter the blood vessels is through the alveoli. So again, 
the Foygon effect is the fact that the, that the mask is preventing the virons that are replicating in the airway from being released into the atmosphere and is hyper-concentrating them, which might cause them to go deeper into the lower bronchus, where they can cause a more severe viral pneumonia. This is not good. You, you, if you want a viral infection, you want to be in the upper bronchus and the upper way, not deep into the lungs, where it could be if you're hyper-concentrating the virons by wearing a mask. He goes on to say, moreover, the Foygen effect could increase the overall viral load because virons that should have been removed from the respiratory tract are returned. Let me just say that again because you're not going to hear about this anywhere and hopefully YouTube doesn't censor this video. The viron effect could increase the overall viral load because the virons that should have been exhaled and sent out into the atmosphere are not. They are returned, increasing the viral load. He goes on to say that viral uh, reproduction in, vi in vivo, uh, including the reproduction of reinhaled virons, is exponential compared to the mask-induced uh, linear droplets uh, reduction. He says, therefore, the number of exhaled or coughed out virons that pass through the face mask might at some point exceed the number of virons without the face mask. And he says the hypercondensed droplets and pure virons in the mask might be blown outwards during uh, expiration, resulting in, in aerosol transmission instead of droplet transmission. So uh, it might even actually, again, think about what he's just saying there. So wearing the mask could actually increase transmissibility because uh, you're getting the pure virons instead of the droplets. So this is, look. I get excited about this because we've been repeatedly told that these things save lives. We've got to mask our kids. Up until April in, in King County here, all the kids in my daughter's school were wearing these stupid masks and they still wear the mask. I've seen children at my daughter's school bike to school with no helmet on, yet their parents make them wear a face mask. I don't know what science you're following or what science you think you're following, but that is not following the science. That is pure stupidity and blind obedience. And it's frustrating to see because these same parents my daughter is one of two children in her class of 27 that actually brings their own homemade lunch to school. They're eating the government subsidized, hyper palatable junk food that is worsening the obesity crisis, the childhood type two diabetes crisis and mental health crisis in this country. So we, we have data that now, hopefully we're at a place in society where we can rethink this, rethink these mandates because as, as you look at counties, you know, like these two count counties in Kansas and other parts of the country, it's interesting to, to look at this. Recently, earlier uh, towards the latter part of, of uh, latter part of May, early June, we know that in, in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, there was this massive surge in COVID. You're like, well, how could that be? There's many people in those counties that are double, triple, quadruple vaccinated. They've, they're boosted. They're still wearing the facial coverings, yet they're having a sixth wave I mean, how could this be? You're not hearing about that in Florida or other parts of the country. Now, yeah, there's little hot spots that pop up, but even in King County here, we recently had another resurgence. And you go to Trader Joe's in Capitol Hill in Seattle. Uh, Sam goes there all the time. He's the only person that is not still wearing a facial covering, yet we're having massive outbreaks here of COVID-19 in the Washington area where we've had mandatory mask mandates, uh, you know, off and on since May of 2020. So I think it's about time that we take a step back and remove ourselves from the tribalism and the identity politics and the virtue signaling and say, are these masks, was it intended to be a forever thing? Was there unintended harms that we overlooked when we got overzealous about flattening the curve and slowing the spread and saving grandma? What if the masks were hyper-concentrating these virons and increasing the viral load, causing a more deep, lower respiratory tract infection? We, science, involves asking questions, testing hypotheses, looking at data, outcome data, and reassessing and reevaluating. We can't continue to pretend that these mandates, you know, were, were super effective, uh, especially in children and low risk people, when we continue to have outbreaks and breakthrough infections and, and, and all of this. So I just wanted to share this, this content with you. Um, of course, I get excited because I thought it was completely silly that people are still wearing masks two and a half years later after the initial outbreak here. So if you found this video helpful, please share this with a friend. Um, this is the paper right here, The Foygen Effect, a mechanism by which face masks contribute to the COVID-19 case fatality rate. You're probably not gonna hear about this on NPR, CNN, or MSNBC, so as always, friends, Please share this with a friend or family member who might enjoy this content. Thank you for leaving a comment below and hitting that like button. And what do you think? Um, like I said, 
I mean, I, I was not a huge advocate of mandatory masking, as many of you know. Um, I made it all the way to December of 2020 uh, until I, I got COVID-19 for the first time. And I've had other people who were, you know, vehement maskers who got it long before I did. Uh, and I was just like, gosh, it, why did it take me so long to get this? And, and I was going to social events, having friends over, doing dinner parties and this. Um, so yeah, these are anecdotal stories. But again, we have county by county comparisons that have adjusted for confounding variables that have found a higher relative risk of mask mandates linked with more severe outcomes with COVID. We should be asking these questions. Are these masks hyper-concentrating the viral load, increasing the severity of disease? I think it's a reasonable question that we should be uh, considering, especially because are we going to make doctors and healthcare practitioners wear masks until the end of time? I mean, is that going to be the thing? If so, we should be looking at the incidence of viral pneumonia or other you know, respiratory uh, conditions that healthcare workers are experiencing, comparing you know, the rates pre-COVID compared to now, because I think it's just just unfair that we're, we've just assumed that there's no unintended harm with these masks. And uh, this is an interesting hypothesis, and I think we should consider uh, reevaluating this and, and changing policy uh, if, in fact, you know, this data is corroborated by other people. So, as always, friends, thanks for tuning in this video. Thank you for hitting that like button. We'll catch you on a future one down the road. Bye now.